Hello everyone, welcome back to another video. So in this question we have charges which are kept at the vertices of a regular hexagon and the length of the hexagon is given as L and they have told that uh, take K as 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught Q by L square and they have given some of the statements and they are asking which of the following statements are true. So let's see the first statement. So they are telling the electric field at point O is 6k and it is along CD. So let's just see if it is true or not. So just quick basics. So if you have a charge in space, we know that it is going to put out electric field in all the directions. And say suppose if I consider a point here P, which is at a distance of R from the charge and electric field at that point will be given as KQ by R square. And this K here is 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught. Epsilon naught is the permittivity of free space. Now, what if if we have more than one charge in space like this. So consider this point P and I need to know what is the electric field at this point. Then this principle that is principle of superposition tells you that the electric field at P is simply the addition of the electric field due to individual charges. That is the net electric field E net is going to be E1 that is the electric field due to the charge 1 at this point plus the E2 electric field at this point due to the charge 2 and E3 which is the electric field at this point due to the charge 3 and important thing you can't simply add them as these are vectors you have to add them vectorially that is you need to consider their directions also when you add them so that will be the net electric field at this point. So now let's see how to do this question. So in this case to find the electric field at O it will be due to all these charges so I can find them one by one and just add them vectorially. So first if I start off with this plus 2q I can write the electric field Ea that is electric field at point O due to this charge plus 2q since it is placed at A I will call this as Ea should be k times the charge which is 2q divided by this distance that is distance of the charge from that point where you are finding the electric field. Now since this is a regular hexagon and they have given one of the side is L then as you can see by symmetry these this forms a parallelogram. So this and this length has to be equal so that means this should be L square. Now the direction of the electric field at this point should be in this direction because as you know this is a positive charge and it is going to put electric field radially outwards. So if you take this point at this point the electric field will be like this going in this direction. And in the same way if I find the electric field due to this charge minus 2q I can write it as ED is equal to k times 2q divided by the distance which is again L square. Now if you have a confusion that uh, should we take this negative sign here, no because here this electric field is a vector. So they, uh, if you take a sign of negative in vector it means totally different thing that is consider a force of 10 Newton in this direction okay. So I will write it as F is equal to 10 Newton. So if I put F is equal to minus 10 Newton this just means that it is in opposite direction. So that negative sign if we put in a vector it means that it is in opposite direction. So you are not supposed to put a negative sign once when you write the magnitude of electric field but you can put a negative sign if the electric field is in opposite direction. So in this case if you are finding this electric field at this point due to this charge so as you can see this is a negative charge right for a negative charge the electric field should be radially inwards from all the directions which means that at this point if you consider this point the electric field should be like going into that charge like this. So this is ED and as you can see that the direction of ED is same as EA. So since we have taken EA positive that means ED is also in the same direction hence this also has to be positive. So you shouldn't put a negative just because the charge is negative because these are vectors and you have to be careful with that. Now here as you know the k is 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught 2 q divided by L square and also in question they have mentioned that take 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught q by L square as k. So this is some different k no need to confuse with this k. This k is usually this constant that is 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught. Here in question they have mentioned 
take the whole thing that is 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught q by l square as k. So I'm going to take this whole stuff as k. So I'll be getting this as 2k. In the same way here also since they are, they are same. So here also you'll be getting 2k. So you have two electric fields that is Ea and Ed both having magnitudes of 2k and 2k and they are in the same direction. So since they are in the same direction I can simply add these two like for example if you have a 10 newton force and 10 newton force in the same direction you can add total forces 20 newton in the same direction. So here also this will be 2k plus 2k that is 4k and we'll get a net electric field of 4k in this direction. Now if the same stuff if I do to this charge and this charge so I'll get electric field due to this charge at this point as Eb is equal to 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught the charge which is Q and the distance again it is L square and they have told to take this whole thing as K and in the same way this charge that is E electric field at O due to this charge E, e. So that also will be same 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught the charge is Q divided by L square and this is also K. Now if you consider the directions so due to this charge at this point the electric field will be in this direction because it's a positive charge so it should be in this direction E B and due to this charge which is negative charge it should be radially invert so if you consider this point also it should be in this direction so this E, e is also in the same direction. So as you can see both EB and EE are in the same directions so I can add these two so net for net electric field will be 2k and its direction should be this. Now considering even these two charges they are also exactly same as these two charges because of this charge at this point electric field will be you will be getting the value of k and it will be in this direction radially inwards and here also due to this charge plus q at this point it will be the k electric field will be having magnitude of k and it also will be in this direction radially outward so at this point it should be outwards so I can add those two so I'll get k plus k again it will be 2k in this direction. So we got till here now we need to find the total electric field but the problem is I cannot simply add these why because they are in different directions so this 2k is in this direction 4k in this direction 2k in this direction so I cannot add them directly. So what we need to do is we need to add them vectorially. So the best way what you can do is as you can see this is 4k in this direction and we have this 2k in this direction and this angle let's figure out what is this angle. So this total angle should be 360 and uh, since there are 6 equal parts so one of the angles should be 60 degree so this angle is 60 degree. Now if I divide this 2k into two components that is this 2k into the uh, vertical and the horizontal component. So as you can see this will be 2k cos 60. So this component horizontal component is 2k cos 60 and cos 60 is 1 by 2. So this will be uh, k so this is a k and again this will be 2k sin 60. And in the same way we have one more 2k in this direction and again this angle is 60 degrees so again I am dividing this 2k into two horizontal and vertical components so this is the vertical component and this is the horizontal component so as you know this is again 2k cos 60 which is again k and this will be 2k sin 60. So as you can see this 2k sin 60 and sin 60 are in opposite directions and both are equal in magnitudes so they cancel out and this k and k are in the same direction as 4k so all of them are in the same direction so the total electric field should be k plus k plus 4k that is 6k and it should be in this direction that is it should be along this OD. So what they have said is the electric field magnitude is correct 6k but they have told it is along CD so it is not along CD it is along OD. So the first option is false. So the second statement they are telling the potential at O is 0. So as you know the potential is given by this expression KQ by R. So if you consider a positive charge and if you consider a point P at a distance of R 
then the potential is given by this expression and here this uh, distance is r and here this k value is 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught and uh, yeah so one important difference is the potential is a scalar quantity which means that if it is a positive charge the potential will be given like this and if it is a negative charge here if it was a negative charge then the potential would be negative of kq by r so here you need to consider the sign because it is a scalar quantity so it's like positive charge will have a positive potential negative charge will have a negative potential so if you don't consider the sign then that would be wrong and also this principle of uh, superposition same thing if you have number of charges and uh, say we need to find the potential at this point p and uh, it's simply the total potential at this point p will be due to the charge q1 which is v1 so here and due to charge q2 which is v2 which is this one and the potential due to charge q3 which is v3 here just be careful on this thing that the potential due to this negative charge at this point has to be negative so then you will get overall potential at p due to all these charges so let's just use that in our question so to find the potential at o the total potential should be equal to the potential due to this charge that should be k times the charge 2q divided by the distance which is l plus due to this charge will be k times the charge here it should be negative why because potential due to negative charge is negative divided by l and as you can see that these two terms are equal and opposite so they will get cancelled so the potential due to this charge and this charge at this point is zero and in the same way if you think about it this charge is plus q and this charge is minus q so their potentials will be equal and opposite at this point so they also will cancel out and in the same way due to these two charges also that means the potential at o should be zero so that statement which they say is right so the third statement that the potential at all the points in this line p r s same okay so let's just check that so consider a point here i'm considering a point p now let's take two charges at a time you take this plus q and minus q as you can see from the symmetry this plus q and this minus q are at equal distances from this point p which means that if i find this potential find the potential at p due to plus q and due to minus q they will be equal and opposite so that means their potentials at this point will get cancelled and in the same way if you look at these two charges to this point as you can see this distance and this distance are same in the same way their potentials at this point will get cancelled and even for these two charges also as you can see this dis two distances are same hence the potential due to these two charges also get cancelled so any point you take along this line pr see it doesn't matter if i take it here or here or here anywhere the potential at all the points will be zero because all the charges will be equidistant equal and opposite charges will be equidistant from that point so which means that the third statement is also true that is along this line pr all the points will be at a potential zero or at a same potential so you can call this as an equipotential line now the fourth statement that the potential along this line sr is same at all the points so let's just verify that consider a point like this here p so again doing the same thing if i take two charges at a time due to this plus q the potential at this point and due to this minus q like this so as you can see this distance and this distance are not same so i'll consider them as r1 and r2 then the potential due to plus q will be potential at p due to plus q is going to be k times q by r1 and due to that minus q is going to be k times minus q divided by r2 and here you will get a non zero value and also the potential due to this plus q will be more compared to minus q because as you know the potential is inversely proportional to the distance so this positive charge is close to this point so here the potential will be more due to positive charge and the potential due to negative charge since the distance is large the potential should be less here so which means as you can see you are getting a non zero value 
and in the same way if you take different charges all the other charges also that is this plus 2q and this minus 2q so this is closer so this plus 2q will have a more potential here and this will have a less potential why because it is at a far off distance and in the same way even this charge and this charge okay they will have their potential so overall you will get a non-zero value of potential but what if if you consider another point here some x point on uh, th this part then as you can see at this point all these negative charges are more close to this point hence there will be more negative potential than the positive potential this is more than enough to tell that the potential at all the points in this SR is not going to be same it is going to be different based on where the point is taken the fourth statement is not true